The problem is to like really get a bite of all of it, you're gonna have to like, yeah, that's doable. Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. All right, so if you know anything about me, you know that I am not shy about my love for wieners. They're called glizzies. I'm not saying that. Say it, old man. Anyways, I have made a hot dog upside down cake. I have slurped Mountain Dew through a hot dog. I have been criticized for deglazing my onions and hot dog stock. I'm a, fine, I'm a regular glizzy gladiator. You happy? And today my wiener weapon of choice is the Korean Kamja hot dog, AKA the Kogo, AKA the French fry coated cheese stuffed globe trotting corn dog of your dreams. And if you're following along at home, we've broken the recipe down into three easy steps. You can find the time codes right there. We also have a full written recipe down in the description. I'm such an embarrassing, you know, even the, the dance from Hitch is too difficult for me. I can't do what Paul Blart does. Hey, have you heard about these new things called podcasts? It's like radio, but not. Anyways, Nicole and I have one called A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. We got new episodes every week and you can check it out. Our latest one just dropped yesterday. Let's get cooking. All right, so like I said, this is a Korean corn dog that became known as the Kogo, or it's known as the Kamja hot dog in Korea. It actually has a ton of different names, but when it came to Canada, it actually really exploded and started going by the Kogo. You might be asking, Josh, why the heck are you making this Korean corn dog? Um, I believe they perfected it. The corn dog is a food that means so much to me. You thought that Disneyland perfected it with their giant beer batter corn dog. You thought that Doghouse in Burbank perfected it with their root beer batter. <laughs> Shout out to the Burbank Doghouse reference. Anyways, the point is that I believe this to be the single perfect version of the corn dog. What it is, is a very loose yeasted batter that's gonna be really nice and fluffy that has a fair amount of sugar in it. And then you take French fries and you crust it around that and it's filled with cheese. And to me, it is just the perfect improvement on a food that I absolutely love and grew up with. It is a far cry from the Foster Farms microwavable corn dogs, which are still good. So give, give me a sec, hold up. Here I have a glove and it does fit, so you must not acquit. I have some Orida crinkle cut French fries heating in the oven. Fun fact that people don't know, uh, Orida is a portmanteau of Oregon and Idaho because that's where all their potatoes are grown. Also, they have a incredibly strong trademark on the phrase tater tot, which is why any generic brand has to call it like tater crowns. Anyway, so these are Orida crinkle cut French fries. This is typically what's used on these Korean Kamja hot dogs or Kogos. And you know that I am not typically a crinkle cut French fry person, much to Nicole's chagrin because she is. But I think the perfect French fry is the curly fry. These are kind of burnt. A breakfast. That's what we're doing. We're cutting these into little bits because we're gonna batter these corn dogs and then we're gonna take these little itty bitty french fry bits and we're gonna add these to the outside and it's gonna create like this absolutely insane coating. We're gonna get the best of both worlds. It's like you don't need a side of fries when the fries are stuck to the hot dog. It's like in Israel, when they put the french fries in the shawarma, it's like the same thing. All right, so just keep chopping these and traditionally you want to use a French brunoise technique. And then someone in the comments is gonna be like, that's a mid dice, not a brew was. And I'm like, look, I gotta fill airtime by talking, okay? Just let me say stuff. <laughs> Cut these up into perfectly even bits. And then the great thing about this is it's infinitely, you can feed it to your dog. That's the best, because my, oh my God, my dog is so intuitive. When he wants food, he knows to come to me and start barking. And also he does this really great trick where he will poop outside and then it freezes, because I live in New York. And then he'll come and he'll bring me a little frozen turd. And then he'll start licking me in the mouth. I love my dog. It's a little Rachel Ray. She's sick. I have all the time, man. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna put them back in the oven to get them a little bit crisp up because this batter is so sugary that it's gonna fry super, super quick. So you need the french fries to get to a cook point that they're gonna fry at the same time. You don't want these to get too dark or stay too light when this is in the fryer. So I'm gonna pop this back in the oven real fast. And now we get to make the batter. So traditionally this is made with a loose yeast batter, whereas obviously an American corn dog is made with a corn batter. Some people really like that nice density with the cornmeal, but for me, Honestly, I love the way this yeast batter, one, it gets things to adhere to it because it's not sort of runny. Anyone who's made corn dogs at home knows it's like deceptively difficult. Shout out to Matt Carney, the former hot dog on a stick employee because he knows exactly how hard it is. There's a technique that they teach you, a hot dog on a stick. You gotta dip the corn dog, then you gotta raise it up and do a little like corn doggium leviosa sort of move. And then the batter stays perfectly at the tip and then you actually have to invert it and clip it to the side of a fryer. So with this yeast batter, it actually sticks really, really well to the hot dog. Uh-oh, hot dog. Bobby Lee, come on the show. Me and Nicole scream, uh-oh, hot dog. And it's like a leap at each other constantly. I mean, for years, we've screamed this at each other. It's, it was the best thing Mad TV has ever done. The best thing any sketch comedy show has ever done. Across all the sketch shows, Bobby Lee's uh-oh, hot dog is still the funniest thing I have ever seen. So we're adding yeast to warm water, letting it bloom a little bit, adding a little brown sugar to that. That's gonna help it bloom. We're just gonna let it rest for like one minute. Don't gotta get too crazy on it. Uh, and then we're going to add that to flour and salt. 
So we've had the yeast blooming for about a minute. I'm just gonna go ahead and add this to the flour. Add it in the middle, stir gradually, and then whip this up, and then we're gonna let this batter rest for a little bit. This is actually kind of a, a tricky timing situation where you don't want the batter to over rest because it's gonna overhydrate, but you do want that yeast to get nice and sticky. That's the difference uh, in doing a yeast batter versus something like a, you know, sodium bicarbonate. What's a baking soda? Baking powder batter. Uh, using a yeast batter, it's gonna get nice and sticky, which is gonna let it stick really love, love lily. Love lily? I love Lily, Lily's my grandma. Shout out to my grandma. She has no idea how to get on YouTube. The one my brother will pull up a video to show her, she makes us play it on half speed so she can understand what I'm saying. And then she goes, oh, you talk too fast. I'm like, life moves quick now, granny. I, uh, uh, we have the batter done. We got the fries crispy in the oven. And now we're gonna, we, we gotta make our, our hot dogs. Uh oh, hot dog. So what we're gonna do right now, we have to make the actual corn dog portion of this French fried cheese stuffed corn dog. And you'll, you'll see, you'll see how we stuff the cheese inside there. We take little cheese elves and they burrow inside the hot dog. Actually, no, this cheese mites are a real thing. There's bugs that burrow into cheese. It used to be like big in, in the way that cheese was actually produced in medieval times. The point is, we're gonna take this here hot dog or a uh, glizzy as Trevor would call it, which I've learned recently that there may be a sexual connotation to glizzy and I don't mean that. So I'll just call it a wiener to not sexualize it. We're gonna take the wiener and we're gonna insert it onto the fat end of the stick right here. You could use a bamboo skewer, but honestly, most bamboo skewers, skewers? Mr. Bamboo skewers are too thin. Most bamboo skewers are too thin and it's gonna give you like some, some bendage. You don't want any bending on your wieners. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're actually using a, a wooden chopstick. We've just found this is the single best tool to make these corn dogs with probably any corn dog. Wooden chopsticks, way to go. So what we're gonna do, you wanna clutch your wiener super tight and then just insert a stick into the hole on the top. Yeah, yeah, make sure you're feeling the pressure of the stick all the way through the wiener. And there we go. So we got one nice wiener. So you can play with a lot of different things. Some of these are just straight hot dogs. Some of these are hot dogs that have little cubes of cheese infused around it. So I'm gonna try and play with that right now. I'm just gonna let that wiener just kind of flop on the table right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a brick of mozzarella cheese. Uh, this stuff is really awesome. Buy bricks of mozz and shred it fresh for yourself. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this into nice little cubes and then I'm going to thread this alongside my wieners. You know, you thread cheese along. This episode is just an excuse to hear me say wiener a lot. You know, because when you talk about threading cheese alongside your wiener and then there's the obvious connotation that like, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying. You, you get where I'm coming from. So yeah, I'm gonna cut these into nice cubes. There we go. Oh yeah, it's a nice wiener cube. Pablo Picasso painted wiener cubes. The cheese is too chewy. We got a cube of cheese, and I'm gonna alternate it with cubes of wiener. So you wanna line up the size of the cheese with the size of your wiener. Obviously the size doesn't actually matter, right? It can be any size and it's still gonna taste just as good. Now we're gonna take our stick, shove some cheese on it. Yeah, yeah, get that all the way down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then wiener. I wanna make a long one. Make a long cheese wiener. And then more cheese. Oh, I love what's happening here. The problem is to like really get a bite of all of it, you're gonna have to like, yeah, that's doable. One more wiener. And then I want cheese. I want cheese to be the first thing on the outside of this. Oh. Yeah, so now you're gonna take your cheese wiener hot dog infusion and you're gonna wrap it in bacon. This to me is like the ode to the LA street dog. I have had so many awesome memories. This is a specifically designed toothpick holder. Why does this exist? You just, why not just have a bowl of toothpicks? What, are your toothpicks not gonna be fresh? Anyways, I have so many great memories of like leaving a football game or a concert and eating a $5 bacon wrapped hot dog in Los Angeles. And so this is like my ode to that. So we're gonna wrap the bacon all the way around this. Always use a toothpick to secure the bacon in place. I'm gonna double wrap this one. Yes, Nicole. Yes. <laughs> Thread the bacon on top of that. And then continue to wrap this around. Oh. Oh yeah, you got all those off the cheese, all those off the cheese. The great thing about using a mozzarella like this is that it's so sturdy that even if you say fry this, uh, the mozzarella should just crisp up and you're not gonna get a ton of seepage. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So make this your own, make this your own. Turn it into like glizzy arts and crafts time, right? Arts and glizzes. Uh, you can do all this stuff. I'm gonna continue threading these up, uh, but then we're gonna go ahead and fry them as well. Everybody. This is our new fryer. This is Fryer John, our old fryer, Fryer Tuck, has not been retired. We have just gotten to a point at the company where we needed to scale, and now we have two fryers, and that is a very exciting time for us. Thank you all for making this happen. So here's our brand new fryer that is not nearly as dirty as the old, I mean, the old one's like warped. It's not even a rectangle anymore. It, it's like an oblong spheroid. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some normal bacon wrapped hot dogs. Like I said, you can customize these any way you want. Like if you see, we got some weird shapes here. Uh, Nicole made these. This is her preferred ratio of glizzy to cheese, which I really respect. So I'm gonna drop the bacon wrapped ones 
in the fryer. They might start spurting a little bit. I'm gonna try and rest the edges on the thing. There we go, perfect. And then we're gonna see what happens to this one. Honestly, this is a big mystery to all of us. When Nicole saw me do this, she was like, that's not gonna work. I was like, no, Nicole, it's gonna work. But the cheese might explode in the fryer. So let's see if it does. Chances of that one working, roughly zero, right? Oh, they all just fell into the fryer, by the way. That's bubbling up something fierce. Should I check on it, or is it like a watch pot never boils situation? No, I know, but I'm, I'm worried about. It. I don't think I don't think I should check on it. Those are doing great. So we got our dogs frying in there, and now this is the traditional technique. You'll see why the yeast dough, fudge flour. You'll see that why the yeast dough is so important here and how much better it works than a traditional corn dog batter. Because with the wet batter, it's so hard to stick french fries on the outside of. That's the difficulty of corn dogs. So we're taking a glizzy, flour it, knock off some of that flour, and then you're gonna take it into this yeast batter and you're gonna roll it around and pick it up. And you're gonna see the yeast batter really cling to it. And then you just rotate it and rotate it and rotate it till it's nice and even in a beautiful tornado motion, just like a 1993 thriller Twister starring Bill Pullman. Bill Pullman, Bill Paxton. Paxton? Bill Paxton, Morgan's, Morgan's a big Bill Paxton fan. So, uh-oh, rest that in the french fry. Oh God. Where are they at? Come on, hot dogs. Yeah, look at that, Nicole, it worked. The cheese is a little bit melting out, but we just gotta let this rest a little bit. Oh, cheese has fused to the other hot dog, but look at this monstrosity. Now, if you want a low carb version, you can just eat this. It sticks a little bit hot coming out of the fryer, but that's okay. So this is really cool. So we're gonna let these rest. <laughs> <laughs> now I am become death destroyer of worlds. That was dramatic. So we're gonna let this rest because we don't want it to be hot into that batter. But hey, speaking of batter, we got this one. We're gonna cover it in Frenchie fries. Just really roll it around, get it all nice and covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not skimping on the fries here. And then keep it rotating and then drop it right into the fryer. So the fryer, it's gonna completely surround it in oil. So even if it's becoming somewhat oblong, then the fryer should just correct all those mistakes. All right, so I'm gonna take this beautiful, oh, look her there. Make it look it. That's so cool, right? And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it and dust it with a little bit of sugar while it's still hot. This is super traditional and what they typically do in Korea. It's cool, cause like an American corn dog, right? It has like a very sweet batter in it. It's typically honey and stuff in it. But with this, you're getting all that sugar on the outside and it's gonna melt into the hot oil. And there is your Korean kamja hot dog. So crispy and sweet and French fry covered. I'm just gonna tuck it right there and then try and do the rest of the episode like this. <laughs> This is a, uh, just a big old crispy rod of fun and I can't wait to get into this. We got a little thing of uh, kochujang ketchup right here. Kochujang's a uh, Korean and it's actually a rice and chili paste and I'm just dunking it all in there and God, this, ah. Uh. Mmm. The bacon, oh, the bacon. There's so much cheese and it's so good. Honestly, the sugar really works. Sugar and mozzarella cheese is a deceptively awesome combo, especially along with all those crispy potatoes. A little bit of smokiness of bacon. This is truly, 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 truly the idealized version of the corn dog. Thank you, Korea, for your many gifts to the culinary canon, from kanjatang to bulgogi to Korean fried chicken and this beautiful hot dog monstrosity. But don't take my word for it. Take uh, the word of a semi-respected culinary professional. Nicole, you, you ready? ready to get sporked? Yes, of course I am. Do you guys think I could, did I get grease on the lens? It's highly possible. Okay, cool. So Nicole, I'm gonna go ahead and spork. We have the uh, dog, dog in our corn dog drawer. Why are you doing it that way? What do you mean? Oh my God, that was actually really, really Yeah, effective. do you want me to dip in ketchup? Yeah. Does mine have cheese in it? Like a plunge? Mine... No, this is a straight hot dog. I can, oh, get, I you, I can get you a cheese bowl though. I can okay, get you ready? a cheese bowl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how's that? No, mm -hmm. hold on. I got a, I got a spork up. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now try and pull. Mm -hmm. Now pull. Mm -hmm. Pull. Yeah. How mm -hmm. was that? Mmm, <laughs> crispy. Well, I'm gonna get you some cheese from the other one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. Mmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got a little schmutz. You did a really good job. The sugar works incredibly well. Done it. With the beef, and with the potatoes. And with the cheese, especially the cheese. Right? Everything about it just works. Everything about this works. We need to sell this on the street corners of the entire world. People already do. Yeah, you should probably just buy it from them instead, but then make this at home if you really want to. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. <laughs> thank you so much, Nicole, for being our taste test guinea pig. And thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen because we got new episodes of the show that you just watched right now uh, every week. We also got a new episode of me and Nicole's podcast, A Hot Dogs and Sandwich, out every Wednesday wherever you get your podcast. Hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food. I'll see you next time, or will I? You can cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen apron, available now at mythical.com.